Hey there, Candace. I was just messaging you because I heard that you came over the other day. Is that true? Oh, hey there, Sandra. Yes, actually, I did happen to go over to your house yesterday. Well, don't you think that's pretty mean of you to decide to visit while I was away on a trip? Not only that, but I heard that you got taken out to eat at a pretty nice place, too. I guess you all just wait to have fun together until after I leave, don't you? Well, it was just that someone had a coupon for the place that was about to expire, so I think they were already planning on going out to eat. Besides, your mom is always trying to find ways to take people out and share experiences with them. Is it really so bad if I happen to go out to eat with my in-laws? Well, I just hope that you enjoyed your steak dinner or whatever it was that you had. I just can't help but think that I should have been there in your place. Honestly, just what is my family thinking of taking you out like that and spoiling you? It's ridiculous. I'm really sorry, Sandra, but you were away on vacation and like you said, I didn't know you were out of town, otherwise I would have offered that. We all go out and use my coupon, but I'll be sure and try and think of your schedule the next time I go over. Well, you really just should have done that from the very start, you know. I mean, you're lucky that my parents are nice enough to not say anything about you, but I'm just sure that they were furious with you for coming over and not taking me out for dinner as well. So the next time you have the idea to take my family out to eat, don't forget about me. Right, I will, I'll be sure to never do that again. I'm really sorry for the confusion. Oh, and just one more thing. I went on vacation this last time with my boyfriend. Oh, okay. I hope the two of you had fun together. Oh, you have no idea. It was just the best. I mean, we really went all out. We went to the beach, got in the ocean, and enjoyed the hotel. I really don't think that there was a single thing that we left undone. And then, at our hotel, on the very last day of our trip, he proposed to me. Oh, really? Well, that's great news. Congratulations on that, Sandra. I, I really mean that. Thank you very much. I knew that he had something big planned out for the trip, but he just refused to tell me what it was. That reminds me, though. It's already the end of summer, so are you really not going to take a trip anywhere this year? I actually really, really, really hate the hot weather, so... The less I do in a season like this, the better. But I'm already thinking of some nice places to go once it becomes fall. Oh, Candace, that really is just too bad. Do you know that? What are you talking about? It's just that I don't like the heat and I prefer cooler weather. Is that really so bad? I mean, have you thought about what you're going to do when you have a child? Are you really just not going to take them anywhere because you might get a little hot? Well, I wasn't really talking about traveling with a kid, but... If I were to have a child of my own, then of course I would try and take them places that they wanted to go. So then you're saying that you would even take them somewhere during the summer? Wait a second, I got it. I finally figured out what this is really about. The truth is that you don't have any money to go on trips, isn't it? No, it really isn't like that at all. But if you're talking about how expensive it could be to travel in the summer, then you're right about that. I usually try and aim my trips to not during peak season so that they don't cost me an arm and a leg. Well, if you're not traveling during the off season, then it must be because you can't afford to. After all, I know that you can't have that much money with a job my brother works. So I guess you really can't help if you just can't afford to do anything. Though, I really just can't relate. My boyfriend, I guess I have to call him my fiance now, is so rich. He lets me do whatever I want. Well, it sounds to me like you have a very kind and generous fiancé then. That's right. He is my fiancé, and he's all mine after I marry him. Thank goodness I waited for the right person to come along before getting married. Unlike you with my lame brother. <laughs> but then again, it's really no wonder why I ended up in that situation that I'm in. I guess my charm just naturally attracts the most successful and handsome men to me. You know, I didn't just marry the first person who I happened to fall in love with, right? What are you talking about? You were desperate to get married, and then you just rushed into what you're having now with my brother, right? I mean, we all know that you're not exactly a spring chicken anymore. It's pretty clear that you're just getting married so that people would stop feeling bad about you. That really isn't what happened at all, and I'd appreciate you keeping your assumptions to yourself. 
well, I'm sorry, but I'm just taking a look at the facts and telling you the conclusions that I'm coming to. Still though, I can't believe that you wanted to get married when there was little money between the two of you. It was really quite irresponsible, no matter how you think about it. But what else can you expect from a rush job wedding like yours? You were probably moving so fast that you couldn't even think straight. No, I mean, we already agreed that we would really just do things for a photo shoot, but that we didn't want some huge party or anything like that. You are such a liar, and you're doing a horrible job of hiding it. Obviously, anyone with money would want to have a huge blowout celebration. I mean, what little girl hasn't dreamed of getting to have a huge wedding all about her? You're telling me that you really didn't want anything like that at all? That you were just fine watching everyone around you have wonderful weddings while you settled for what you and my brother had? The least you could do is fess up and be honest with me about this. I am really not just the kind of girl that you think I am, I guess. But Toby and I were never going to have any other kind of wedding than we were going to. I guess there's just really no getting anything out of you, is there? I should have known that you would insist on living your fantasy world rather than just accepting what I'm saying to you. I have no idea what my brother ever saw in a lady as stubborn as you. He should have gone with someone that he really loved instead. Maybe he should have followed in my footsteps and waited more carefully. Maybe if I didn't do things the way that I did, then we wouldn't have ended up with someone as unique looking at yourself. <laughs> okay, well, I've had about enough of this, so if you'll excuse me, I'm going to get back to work now. You mean that you know that I've been right about all of this and that's why you're running away? You've got nothing else to say to me. You're really just so pathetic sometimes. Do you know that? The thing is that you probably actually have to do work. But that just proves my point about how poor you really are. Anyways, good luck with your job. I hope you can make enough money to do something more special for your wedding. <laughs> hey there, Candace. I was just wondering if you heard the big news from Toby. You mean about you getting married? Yes, I heard. That's very, very exciting for you. Well, you have to be at least a little surprised by all of this, right? I mean, can you believe that I'm going to be having my wedding at the same place as that celebrity? This is going to be just amazing. Yeah, it really is something, isn't it? I'm very much looking forward to the big day. I know! Everyone is just going to be so jealous of me. It's the best feeling ever. I've already custom ordered my dress and everything too. This is going to be the best wedding that anyone has ever seen. And it's mine. Are you really sure about that, Sandra? What do you mean, am I sure about that? Just why wouldn't I be sure about all of this, huh? I mean, it sounds like you're putting a lot of money into this wedding. Are you sure that's a good idea? If you're asking me if I'm worried about being able to afford this wedding, then you have nothing to worry about, Candace. My amazing fiancé, Mark, told me that he was going to be paying for everything and that he wouldn't spare a cent if it was something that I wanted. Isn't that just amazing? He wants me to have the wedding of my dreams, so he didn't even give me a budget. He just told me to say the word and whatever I wanted was mine. You must be so jealous of me right now, huh? I'm not really jealous. Thanks for checking in, though. I just wanted to make sure that you thought everything was okay. But I'm sorry if I was overstepping my bounds and being a bit of a worry ward. Oh, trust me. I really enjoy you giving me any opportunity to prove you wrong and brag about my wedding at the same time. It really just is a shame that you'll never have what I have. You were just too focused on getting married before me, weren't you? That really wasn't even part of our wedding plans at all, if you must know. Uh, whatever. It is so obvious that you're just lying out of embarrassment right now. I know that you're jealous because I'm going to have my perfect wedding. Anyways, I hope that you've picked up something really special to wear to my wedding at least. Because, to be honest, I think we're going to have it at a place that wouldn't typically let in people like you. I see. Well, thank you so much for the heads up, but I've already chosen what I'm going to wear at the wedding. 
uh, whatever. It just makes sure you take a shower the day of my wedding. After all, you're going to be sitting with my family. Since you're married to my brother, just make sure you don't stink up the place. Anyways, I guess we'll see you at my wedding then. Make sure you bring us a wedding gift, if you can afford it. <laughs> Hello, Sandra. I'm sorry to bother you while you're busy getting ready right now, but I just had something that I needed to ask you really quickly. What is it? Don't you know that I'm getting my hair and makeup done right now? Whatever it is that you want to talk to me about, just make it quick. Well, okay then. The thing is, I just arrived here and the usher is telling me that I don't have a seat at the wedding. I told him to check the table to close family where Toby would be sitting. But they even checked there and still said that they don't have a record of any guest with my name. I'm sure I sent my RSVP, so I'm not sure what's happening right now. Oh, I see what's going on here. Yeah, I can clear this up for you. I have instructed the staff here to not let you in under any circumstances. Wait, what? I'm sorry, but why in the world would you do something like that? Well, I was thinking about it, and I realized that I just couldn't have you at my wedding. You would just ruin the entire aesthetic that I was going for. Then again, I don't know what aesthetic you would even fit in. But either way, I wasn't about to suffer you for being in the background of all my wedding photos and ruining them. But you understand, don't you? I mean, there's nothing wrong with wanting to be surrounded by pretty things when you get married. And one way you can ensure that is by not letting any ugly things or people in. So you're telling me that you uninvited me to your wedding because you think that I'm ugly? I don't care if you had the most beautiful and expensive dress in the whole world. I really just don't even know what to say to this. I mean, I spent a lot of money renting this dress for today. I certainly hope that you didn't think that I thought you were beautiful or anything like that. What would be the point of putting a pig like you in it and ruining it? Did you really think that I was going to let you near my family on my big day? No way. So why don't you just turn around and go home? Are you sure about that? You really want me to leave right now? Uh, duh. That's literally what I just said, isn't it? Anyways, I already told you that I'm busy. So just leave. If all you're going to do is whine and complain about how you came all the way down here for this, then save it. Because I don't want to hear it. I'm the star of today. And so if I don't want to talk to you, then there's no way that you can make me. You really just don't have a clue what you're talking about, do you? Man, you're just an idiot, Sandra. Excuse me? Did you really just send that message to me on my wedding day? You're an idiot. You're just mad because I wasted your time, and now you have to go home. But just beat it, because I don't want to see you at all today. So tuck your tail in between your legs and just run away already. I'm sorry, but if you think this is going to end well for you, then you are going to be sorely mistaken, Sandra. You broke your promise. But if you really want, then I can still go home. What in the world are you talking about? Have you gone crazy or something? I thought I already told you to go home and leave me alone. Why are you still texting me? You should know that this was always going to happen and I was never once going to really give you a seat at my wedding. Okay, then that's fine. I just have to collect my $50,000 then and I'll be on my way. $50,000? What on earth are you talking about? Well, I'm talking about the money I lent your husband to throw this wedding, of course. Hold on a second. Seriously, what are you talking about? My husband didn't borrow a cent from you. You're crazy. And if you think he borrowed $50,000 from anyone, then you really have no idea what you're talking about at all. There you go again, proving my point about just how stupid you really are, Sandra. You have no idea that your husband was borrowing the money from me to be able to throw your wedding. So what are you going to do now? Pay me back or make me go home? No, seriously, what in the world are you talking about right now? I guess maybe you should have a little chat with your fiancé about all of this. I'll go home and send you the invoice for your debt later, okay? Hey there, Sandra. I just wanted to congratulate you on having your wedding the other day. 
Did you talk to your husband, Mark, about paying me back the money he borrowed from me? I was just curious if you guys decided when you were going to be repaying me all of that back. I don't know. It's not my problem because it's not money that I borrowed from you. Well, you should know that I'm looking over Mark and I's contract here. He told me that in the event that he can't pay me back, that I can claim repayment in kind with his personal belongings. This is all your fault. I was supposed to have the perfect wedding and you completely ruined everything. Do you know that? I'm sure that I have no idea at all of what you're talking about right now, Sandra. Did you know that after the wedding, Mark and I got into a huge fight? He told me that I was asking for too much for the wedding, so we had to go somewhere for the money. He told me this was all my fault. Can you believe him? I couldn't believe he actually said that. But now it seems like you think that all of this is really my fault instead, but I'm afraid I've got nothing to do with this. How can you say that when you demanded that we pay back the money right then and there? Why couldn't we just pay you monthly or something like that until we had paid everything off? I guess you really didn't talk all that much with your husband about how this was done. After all, the reason why I demanded to be paid back immediately was because of the rudeness you were showing me. And just what is that supposed to mean, huh? I mean that when your husband borrowed the money from me, we had a very specific agreement. I told him that you were always rude to me and that I didn't feel comfortable lending him money for your wedding. He told me that he would talk to you and make sure that you didn't keep up the kind of bad behavior towards me. But he never told me anything like that at all. Well, we included it in the contract, so that was to be part of the deal for the loan. In fact, none of this would be happening to me right now if you weren't acting the way you did towards me. I'm actually surprised that he didn't mention any of that to you at all. But then that means it can't be my fault. I didn't know anything, and it's all Mark's fault for not telling me about any of this sooner. Well, you might have a point there, but a contract's a contract. And it would never have been made if you weren't asking for so much. But I mean, why in the world would Mark think to go to you and ask for money? Doesn't he know how much we dislike each other? Well, you were insistent on having your perfect wedding day. No matter the cost, weren't you? You even told Mark that you'd divorce him right after the wedding if everything didn't go exactly as you pictured it, right? So he felt like he had no choice but to come and ask me for the loan. But that still doesn't make any sense. I mean, why would he go to you for money? He had other options, like our parents, or friends, or literally anyone else. I heard that both your parents turned Mark down. They said it was silly to spend so much money on a wedding. They were never about to give in to your crazy demands like Mark was. But you told Mark that it would be fine if he paid you back a little bit every month, didn't you? Did you know that he didn't even come home last night? Well, again, I think you're going to have to take the blame for that one. And just how is that my fault, too? Why is everything my fault? Especially when you were the one sending Mark screenshots of our conversation. I didn't think that you were the kind of person to make fun of someone behind their back. I didn't think that you were capable of something like this at all. Well, it sure is a good thing that we both learned about who we really are so early on, isn't it? Candace, please. I am so, so sorry for all of this. You have to forgive me. You have to know that I never wanted things to go this way. Okay, and what do you expect me to do in light of any of that, huh? Look, I'm just trying to apologize here. I'm sorry, okay? I messed up by borrowing money that we couldn't repay, calling you names and all the other mean stuff. I really am sorry, but please, I can't pay you back all at once. It's just not possible. Well, too bad, because that's how it's going to be. Wait, seriously? Even after I apologized for everything, you're still going through with this? I thought we were family. Why do you need the money back so quickly? What do you mean? You think we're family? You didn't even invite me to your wedding because you didn't want me sitting with your relatives. You've always looked down on me. And now you think I'll just forgive you because you said sorry? Come on, please. This is all a big misunderstanding. I honestly didn't know you were making so much money. I thought you couldn't afford a wedding or something. Well, it sounds like you've been seeing things the way you've wanted them to be and not how they really are. But you brought this upon yourself. I'm not changing my mind and that's final. After that, I heard things only got worse for Sandra and Mark and that they ended up getting a divorce. I have no idea what Mark was thinking not talking to Sandra about the conditions of his loan. 
I tried to be patient with him and give him warnings here and there, but maybe he was just too busy planning the wedding to really pay attention. But while he was doing that, Sandra was busy getting him into deeper and deeper trouble with me. To pay back the money, Mark had to sell his cars and many of the other possessions he owned since they were married. Sandra was also compelled to cough up half the debt. Sandra almost avoided paying her half, but when she told her parents about the divorce and what happened to cause it, they were furious. She had meant to ask them if she could live with them again, but they said only on the condition that she pay half the loan. What ended up happening instead is that Sandra's parents paid off her debt, but they made her sign a contract agreeing to work to pay it all off. Sandra's dad found her a job through one of his connections and shipped her off to an oil rig in the middle of the ocean. I haven't heard from them in months, and I prefer to keep it that way. When Sandra's parents first agreed to pay her debt, I knew she had gone there to ask them if she could live at their house again. I was so worried that I'd never be able to spend time with my in-laws again since Sandra would be there. But thankfully, I don't have to worry about that anymore. 